Ryu of T1 up against VG. It is also an elimination match. One of these teams will be saying goodbye to their TI11 dreams. Um, and Kezu, we do know as well that VG have the first pick. So where is that Primal Beast going to be ending up? Is it going to be banned? Is it going to be picked up by VG? It's two options. You either are okay with it and you play it yourself because that's what you just talked about. Or if you're mm -hmm. not, you need to ban it out. So I think right now with what's happening, they got to be picking Primal Beast themselves. So they ban Venno. I think this is only to take away a little bit of the the comfort that T1 have, especially from second pick, it makes it easier for you to just mask where the hero is actually going. Is it the three? Is it the four? I mean, most of the time it's a support anyway, but you know, it makes it easier for you as T1. Mm -hmm. Gun dying also being banned away. One question I do have if the Primal Beast does get picked up here, which it will, is, Woo, is it nice? Good guess, guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I fear, is there a little bit of worry being like, okay, T1 know how to play Primal Beast. Like they have this down pat. They clearly have to have some amount of solutions to it themselves, right? I mean, I'm sure Thompson does for the mid lane, but this and hero is flexible. You don't know where it's mm -hmm. going. It could be in the off lane. It could be position four. Seconds it could be mid lane. And maybe at some point people experiment with the position five primal beast. But that's the scary thing about the hero. It is flexible. I have no idea where Vici played this hero. So that'll be interesting to see. And T1, either they have that information themselves through scrims or has anyone actually played it on Vici? That's my real question. Yeah, off lane. Maybe. Off lane. <laughs> So, so the BAB Primal Beast has only been played by mm -hmm. BAB, and that's a win and a loss, so two games. Okay. That was against Virtus Pro in both series. All right, so we saw this before against Team Secret, actually, where Thompson picked up Tiny against yeah. Primal Beast in that mid matchup, mm -hmm. and Thompson did win that matchup. I think it's a hero that can follow the tempo of the Primal Beast, but I think this looks like it will most likely be an offlane Primal Beast. So it'll be a completely different game, and... What do you know? The Morphling is now out. <laughs> Two heroes that are pretty this good is... versus Morph, right? Yeah, no, for sure. Like, you have the tiny response to the Primal Beast, and both these heroes, it's not like they're weak at all against the Morphling. But this is literally the exact opening that uh, Secret had earlier against T1 in the series that we watched. They also have Primal Beast into Morphling. Yeah, they're warmed up now, right? <laughs> they played against it once. Say... <laughs> they had the tiny, yeah, so... Did... What, what were the, the lessons from there that you think? What alterations are going to happen fear for them to not have the same fate as when they went up against this uh, when they first secret? I think Topson will be much more um, aware of the fact that this Morphling can join the fight, turn into the high-level tiny from the mid lane, right? And then he mm -hmm. is very, very strong. So pay a little bit of respect to that. I think if you're playing, if this tiny is Topson's tiny, of course, that this morph, when you are being aggressive, you're diving. If he TPs in, this morph is really strong if he puts a point into his ultimate early. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds remaining. Where are you sitting I'm with this draft mean... so far, T Panda? Um, one thing that I'm kind of curious about is the Morphling builds that I've seen of late, where they might go for something like. Uh, three points in adaptive strike if uh, if the opponent's offlane or something that you can poke. Uh, that's usually been against heroes like Pango. You could do the same against the, uh, against this Furion if it ends up being in the same lane, just to provide them that extra bit of damage. Because the three points at, at level five, you have a you have a very good damage ability, uh, and even look through kills from that. Now you got this primal beast. If there's anything. Uh, they want to they wanna utilize early on into fights is having Primal Beast help out the Morphling or vice versa if you have Morphling rotate to a fight that breaks loose on the other lanes where you might be able to get that. I would really just max out on as much damage as you can throw early on. Maybe sacrifice a bit of survivability on the side if that's, if that's an option for them to go. Yeah, I mean, I could add to that too. Like, the Morphlings nowadays, like... When you're playing versus NP, this hero isn't really harassing you. You don't need to keep doing the attribute shifting. Like, you're, he's out CSing you. He's using his trance, he's using his right click. But now it's a little different from the Morphling. You can level up your waveform. You can put more points into your W as well. And you actually have good kill threat on top of this Nature's Prophet now. And if you add a Witch Doctor to that, like, if you play the CS game, maybe you'll win with NP. But this NP is very, very killable against, like, this new meta Morphling where you only have one point into the attribute shift. Mm-hmm.
This Witch Doctor coming out is a little bit interesting. So far, it's only really been played by Liquid and Nouns in Last Chance Qualifiers, and we haven't seen VG on it before, Kazu. Yeah, so what I was thinking they were going to go for, just to make sure that your Morph has a good game, because I think VG are more comfortable with the Morph going to the safe lane. So when you see the response from T1, which is Nature's Prophet, which for them has worked out pretty well against Morph, you want to pick a support that helps your Morphling to actually play the matchup. I was thinking there's a chance they could pick Enchantress to help out with the lane, but I think... They would rather have a little, you know, some more kill potential as well and also team fights. So they go with the Witch Doctor, makes a lot of sense. And now they also go with the Shaker, which I guess is going to be paired up with the Primal Beast. And if I'm not mistaken, they've played a similar lane. I'm surprised that maybe, you know, this the Nyx Assassin doesn't seem as contested in some of these series, which makes me, you know, it, it surprises me a little bit. Avicii have like, they have some good stuff and then they also have some worrying stuff in terms of numbers. I guess like when you look at the draft, you can come up, is this a good thing or not? But Morphling is 4 and 0 for Erica, but Frisk is 1 and 5 on the Shaker, which is a bit worrying. But I guess like Shaker has like, I think when we talked about it, was it yesterday I think with Fear? That Shaker is kind of, you know, he, he has to tank the bullet in most games where there has been a Morphling on the opposing team. So it could have been a big reason why Shaker has such a bad statistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, in this game it'll be a bit better because he doesn't have to be the main source of initiation. I think that's like, playing Gris Morph is hard for starters. He's not going to have to do it this game because Morph is on his team. And the second thing is if he's the main source of initiation, it's hard. But you got a Primal Beast this game, so... It should be a little bit of a different story. Team Secret had Earth Spirit with the Primal Beast in the offlane, so similar idea it looks like Vici Gaming is going for. Mm -hmm. Retaliation being uh, Clockwork. Yeah, that Clockwork now makes it so... I thought for a second there, it's like, huh, NP Tiny, that's a classic lane, so maybe Thompson will pick up something new for himself later in the draft, but I think with that Clockwork pick, unless we're going to see a Thompson Clock mid... It's probably just going to be the tops and tiny <laughs> mid and clockwork in position four. I mean, it could be. I, I saw. Plus one tiny. I think Ooh. I saw like a list than a week ago. The I think I think it was Weeha who was playing uh, mid clockwork and was actually doing pretty well with it. I was like, okay, I guess that could work. I, uh, all these questions are throwing around like where things could end up is the reason why T1 can have an advantage though. So many different things can go in so many different roles. Um, but Kazu, what do you want to focus on banning out for VG? Maybe not even just a specific role, but something that T1 might be looking for in their draft to round it out. Yeah, so what's important for them right now is to make sure that you pay attention to Ana's hero pool because more likely than not, they're just going to need... Uh, a carry pick as Nature's Prophet is most likely just locked into this offlane role. So they're just banning out heroes that work well against the uh, morph in the game. At least Ursa is definitely one of the best. Um, I'm looking at some of these carry matchups and I'm not sure if probably Fear might be able to answer this better because I feel like they're maybe not having the most carry options. But now that they pick like and this could help a little bit because now this means Primal Beast is indeed going middle. I'm sure they were looking at the Drow until that Ligon pick. Now they're definitely mm -hmm. not going to be able to do that. So I would not recommend that. So choices against the Morphling, but also playing versus the Lycan. I think you just have to, first and foremost, deal with your lane at hand. And that's going to be the Lycan here. So it, it's definitely hard because their options are incredibly limited when you're playing versus Morph in general. But now you have to address playing versus Lycan in the laning stage. Hmm. So what does this mean, though? Uh, who's the care? So it's going to be mid primal then, right? Okay, mid primal beast, yeah. lichen. Yeah. Uh, some people they yep. I could they could go to the troll route. Is that in the pool? Troll could be okay if they want to lane versus lichen. Could be decent pick. Uh, this is Anna though we're talking about. I think he's in a rough spot here. I don't think there's like super obvious picks here. Like Sven's pretty mm. difficult as well to play against Lone Druid. Is something he could do. I know Ana plays it. They might use all the reserve time because I think this pick for Ana is incredibly difficult and nothing really comes to mind. Is Naga is in the pool. That's something we've seen before and there goes the Lone Druid. That makes sense too. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you called it. It is going to be picked up. There it is going on. Ana and Topson, you locked in for that tiny. All right, guys, mid lane. How's it going to go out? Is it going to be the Topson show yet again, <laughs> Kezu? Uh, I feel like not as much this game as in the last game, for sure. 
He's, he's going to do well and he's going to try to go around. I feel like a little similar as to last game. This time I prefer Vici's draft, oh. but if T1 can keep up a similar tempo to last game, that's how they can win this game. Because I think the longer this game goes, and if Vici have good lanes, this like a Morph Primal Beast, they're going, they can run them over real quick. Mm -hmm. T-Panda, same boat. Uh, the last time uh, VT actually played the Lycan Morphling was against Tempest, and I don't think this is Tempest that they're playing against right now, so it's going to be a tough challenge for them. I I kind of want to say T1 on this one. Um, if, if VT don't hit their timings with the Primal Beast, this is going to be a tough game for them. Okay, and Fia, you just have to tell me the team, no reason. <laughs> uh, VT. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. We're going to jump into game number two. It might be done and dusted for VG if T1 can secure this as we head over to Dan Organaries. Thank you, thank you, Nat. And, uh, wow, I mean, T-Panda, SA is just catching L's from the grave there, just saying it's not Tempest. I mean, he's right, though. There's no SA, there's no NA left in their tournament. And, well, at the moment, there might be no Vici if they're not able to get this one. How about you, Aries? What are you thinking? Which, uh, which side are you looking to predict here? Oh, it's a, it's a tough one. I'm worried with, uh, with T1 with their capability to, to end the game very early. I mean, Druid, along with, a, with an Nature's Prophet, you also have the potential for Thompson to make a lot of plays as well. I think at least Vici have ways to, to be active early on. I think there was one thing you, you want to try and mirror the pace of T1. So I think we're in for, for a good game nonetheless. So what, what are you thinking? Uh, I think we're in for a good one. Again, I feel like this game is set up for T1 to have very... Mm, small windows or small margins for error rather is probably the better way to put it right because if you're able to get up into these timings and make these early pushes happen and get a good amount of farm with the lone druid make a lot of successful rotations with the tiny it's going to work out really well especially considering like with the lichen with the morphling you can't really fight too early and as soon as i saw that witch doctor earthshaker come out my thing was t1 have just got to continue to run at them they got to pick up the pace and that's exactly what they did they did nature's profit they did clockwork and then and they followed that up with a lone druid. Uh, I think the bands that Vici put forward were completely the correct ones. Oh, this might not be uh -oh. too good though. Oh, that's not a good spot to run up, Mr. White One. As XM just charges in, Yang lines up the paralyzing cask as well. So already XM's off to a great start. And <laughs> he's <stuck> in here. <laughs> uh, Easy CS. <laughs> he gives him a dip and he feeds over a train. So a little bit of extra uh, gold experience. On? They had the vision, man. How, what's he walking up with, like, a bunch of units for the cask to bounce to? I'm, I'm not sure what that one's about from Whitemon. Typically, I'm a big Whitemon fan, but, uh, yeah, that was a, a little bit odd. I think uh, up top, do they have... Uh, they do have Zephyr playing the Clockwork alongside the Lone Druid. It's going to be really good into this uh, Lycan plus Earthshaker lane, just because, of course, it makes uh, Earthshaker's life horrendous. And uh, it also deals reasonably well with the Wolves, right? Previously, with a lot of these summon units, you could just throw them in there and soak up a lot of the Battery Assault uh, ticks, but now it actually deals double damage to them, so it's not quite so bad. It definitely seems like this is a lane that T1 can find killers. It's going to come down to, I think, if Frisk gets caught out, I mean, the clockwork, not only in the lane, but in the game, has very good answers to the Earthshaker, so... We've seen Frisk, it's something he's comfortable on. They haven't had the greatest amount of success with the Earthshaker, nonetheless, but... He is caught out of position. It's really going to come down to BAB's micro. If he can tank up his bottom lane, why, Mon? Uh, you were just saying, uh... <laughs> you're saying you're a big fan of his, and uh, unfortunate for him to give over first blood, but at least he's going to be able to you know, rectify that. There's a reason I'm a fan of his, is uh, they're even able to bully out on the top side as well as mid lane. Thompson is uh, gonna need to be a little bit careful. I mean, if there's anyone that knows how to play against a primal beast in mid lane, it's gonna be him though, right? He has had by far the most success on it. So he's just gonna make sure that he's saving some of those cooldowns to be able to get the, the turnaround potential there or just to disrupt that trample or the charge. All about finding Often. the windows on XM to be able to go for those kills because Tiny, early on, incredibly squishy. Yeah, we saw Topson in the in the previous game put a lot of emphasis on on making rotations. Bottom Yang might be in some trouble again with the right clicks coming through. This double range lane for T1, even into the double range from Vici Gaming, is proving to be a big issue for them at the moment. I think that's why it's working. Most of the time we would be like, oh no, you don't want to go double range, especially with your off lane pairing. But if you're into double range, you don't really care. And uh, Erica, you're a little bit too far forward, my guy. You don't have a stick. 
And, nice guns uh, back from Whitemon. He's going to be playing with the Fairy Fire if required here from Erica. Instead, he's actually going to look to the TP, the T1 Talon. So Erica will be okay. If only Glimpse had such a short cooldown that you could just do it again, but <laughs> not, not this time around. Hmm. So the other thing that I'm looking for this game is just like, how are you going to be addressed? T1 Tower, XM. Yeah, there we go. Went for the onslaught into the trample, but yeah, Topson just instantly used the avalanche, and well, XM won't be able to continue to play aggressive and get the damage out on the tiny. He's going to be looking for those level timings, right? As soon as uh, XM levels up, he new realizes that he hits a huge new power spike. So if you're able to deny that away, if you're able to just use a single spell, like this is a Topson going to be going for kills in this lane. Primal Beast so incredibly tanky that you're just not going to be able to take him down. So. I'm sure he understands that XM's probably trying to mirror a lot of this movement that uh, Topson was making in game number one. He won't let him do it, though. He's just going to shove the wave in and force him to come back to that lane because, you know, if you leave a lane against a tiny, he does have those abilities to be able to spam it out. Yeah, do you think there's going to be an easier lane here for XM to rotate to? To, to maybe put his stamp on one of the side lanes? It's got to be the bottom lane, right? Like, he's already claimed the, the top bounty rune, so he's going to go there anyway, just so that he can get another. But uh, again, you're going up against that dual ranged lane, and well, it clearly hasn't worked out too well for them so far. Yeah, maybe he's just thinking, you know what? I'm good at a lot of things that Topson isn't, but I'm no three-minute rotator, so I'm just going to get back <laughs> and secure that uh, that water rune for myself and make sure I've got the ability to make plays. You were mentioning about bottom there with, with him potentially rotating. I think this is going to be later on as well in the game, but you know, when BAB gets Helm of the Dominator, I'd really like to see VG Gaming along with XM put some emphasis to try and play with the Lycan, because if they can try and push this Lone Druid into the jungle, I mean, the, the powerful thing about this here is that you're, you're relatively self-sufficient. You can stay in the lane for a very long time. You don't want to be back in that jungle too early on. No, and the way that you counter the Lone Druid most of the time is that you just look to try and deal a lot of damage early on. And I mean, if you have a look at those heroes, like I mentioned before, you've got this uh, Lycan and you've got this Morphling that want to be a little bit more passive. They want to be farming up those super early items. So a single pick off for T1 can actually result in a lot because we've seen how quickly Lone Druids can look to melt towers if they get the opportunity to. And I, I think that's a scary thing here. Like both sides have a have capability to be able to take towers incredibly early on and, and hit a very, very early kind of mid-game timing. Just comes down to who's able to get out of the, the leaning stage. And at the moment, it looks like we're, we're pretty even. Yep. Erica is in fact struggling. I mean, the panel was expecting this, but kind of the, the change that we're seeing with the Nature's Prophet being able to match up into him. He did go for the two points in the attribute shift, though. And he did already use his waveform as well, so they are very capable of just tossing that sprout onto him and getting a few free right clicks in. Let's see if... Uh, I wonder if Whitemon's going to look to try and toss down an Observer Ward deep into the lane just to make sure that he's able to get that glimpse off if he goes for it again, or even just preventing any TP rotations that might be coming in eventually for XM, but instead... Looks like uh, he might be eventually hoping to come up top, but Topson's doing a very good job of continuously, like I was saying before, shoving that wave in. We have our first power in spawning. Besides putting a lot of emphasis, starting to rotate the supports. Looks like Zephyr's going to be able to snag the hay, so Topson and XM won't get a free refill, of course. These are two heroes that we're going to see time and time again. Every two minute interval, both tier one and VT Gaming need to be keeping tabs on the power runes because if you give one over for free to an active hero like this, then they are going to capitalize and get kills on the side lanes. Yeah, I mean, they're not quite ready yet on T1. You know, we, we were mentioning all of these heavy rotations coming through from Topson as Zephyr underneath this tower. Hopefully he doesn't get body blocked up by Ana's bear. It's not going to be like uh, Cuckoo in his treants from the last game. But uh, yeah, you actually do need like the item lane. to start with. Hobson's in a bit of trouble. Eldict is actually going to look to the TPR, but XM has the onslaught to stop that. It's a big kill for them to find. Hobson, one more tick. It's not going to be enough, though. And XM doesn't have mana for the trample. It's going to be a long chase down. So can anyone the clarity help? popping. We'll see if he can catch back up. The trample now available here for XM. Hobson's going to toss as well <laughs> if required. And <laughs> All right. The onslaught, though. Oh, there's a hit. Oh, just off the mark. Come on, give him the tip. Give him the voice slide. <laughs> I think it's probably on cooldown. Otherwise, he would have been able to claim it. But again, this is what happens, right? I'm sure someone would have loved to be able to come through and join that. But 
Uh, with the lack of lockdown that you've got, or the lack of control, rather, for that lone druid bear, you just leave the lane for even a couple of seconds, and that tower is nearly gone on the top side. The rotation from Cuckoo with so much damage they're able to do to it. The Cuckoo's now back in the jungle, and you're giving White Mon some solo experience, and somehow a disruptor's already level 5, so an early static storm could be nice here for T1. Somehow, it's because he's a beast, my guy. Oh, I get it, I get it. White Mon, the, the baller, look at him. The Ignition God. He's hit the Ignition. Ignition God. <laughs> Honestly, the Static Storm can definitely catch them off guard if they look to smoke around with it. Oh, they got the DD as well. That's really big. So the two key power runes that you're hoping for, they're the two that have already spawned this game, especially if you're a Primal Beast, right? You want the Haste Druid just so that you're able to get a lot more of those Trample procs going, and Trample's damage is based off the amount of damage that you do as well, your right clicks. So double damage is going to do so much to be able to assist with that. See the first smoke out of T1. Importantly, the first movement from Topson. They smoked onto the Observer Ward, so Vici Gaming are aware of this. This up is free. They can TP in as well if they need some extra numbers to try and help out. But look at the wrap around the clock where Cogs holds Frisk into play. Zephyr, a worthwhile sacrifice of his own life to make sure that Vici Game will not retreat. But XM, he's shown up to the party with a trample straight on top of Topson. There's nothing that Arn is going to be able to do to keep his mid laner alive. Uh, that's just that little bit of a miscalculation, right? Not realizing, the, or rather forgetting, that he might have that double damage available. I mean, be careful here on Erica. They connect with a Thunder Strike, and this time the Micro is looking a little bit better, but still, with that waveform, able to get on away, but it's causing him to suffer in terms of that net worth. A lucky root coming through here from Ana. Will he be able to claim it? Again, again, he's praying. RNG, oh. okay. Again? Hey, oh, XM? Uh, it looks like oh, this is very awkward. <laughs> Sometimes luck on your side. <laughs> I just remembered Ooh. Anna's Anna's bear's name is a little uh it's a little interesting. Oh, oh yeah yeah yeah. We, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the range that it attacks from, you know? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Pops it again. I'll try and see if anyone from Vici Gaming wants to play top. One like person with Arno. Yeah. Even... Zephyr. Oh yeah, good, good, good assistance there from Frisk. He knows that he's not able to just drop the... Uh, oh, actually steals the Arcane Rune and doesn't feel too bad about popping it, the Shapeshift as well because of the relatively lower cooldown. Is anyone going to be able to help Topson though? Arno's busy taking the top tower and you can maybe make the TP in here on Cuckoo if you're wanting to. Yeah, here we go. He's like uh, baiting out for as long as he can. He's getting close to the tower. Finally, one person will TP in, but a little bit too late on Zephyr. He might have just TP'd to his own grave. Look at Arno. He says, peace, brother. What nothing to do with his skirmish as XM gets the double kill. And this might be the T1 tower now. They've got no creeps, but BAB with the Helm of the Dominator. Exactly what I wanted to see. XM playing with this timing on the Lycan. Yeah, but they're just saying, look, we might be giving up one, but if we can get multiple from it in exchange, then it's going to be well worth it. Static Storm's already been used, though, and White Mon's completely out of mana. Unless they get another lucky route, he, he should troubled. just waveform away. Ooh. Never mind. Oh, still on cooldown, and he maxed all the way to strength, so had no more room to play with there on Erica. They've been putting a lot of pressure onto the Morphling. Almost being able to find multiple kills onto him, but that's his first death in the lane. And now this will open up the tower with the catapult timing. So T1, they're going to get another T1 tower to their name. Mm -hmm. And they've protected all of their own towers as well, which is the key thing too. It means that you're able to farm that little bit more greedily on the Nature's Prophet and allow the supports to take the lane a little bit like Zephyr's doing now. Yeah, they just realized they don't quite have the fight potential to be able to defend their tier one, but I don't think they're going to be too sad about that. They've just been able to claim far too much on the map, and I'm sure Vici are going to be feeling not too great with how their map presence is looking to be, especially considering you've got one of these heroes like the Disruptor, where you have a good early game, and he's able to snowball into an exceptional one. Zephyr, though, another death. Oh, Frisk might have to... Okay, never mind. Well, is going to be able to cut through? Hey, one, they are starting to connect, though. Topson and Cuckoo hand in hand. 
Fine is going to be able to get the combination up, but Thompson's in trouble, especially with XM. Charging to the middle. Now he's going to pick up and chuck down the Disruptor as well. As they've got big primal beast issues. 7 1 and 0 is XM. We spoke about how important he was in their victory against Wildcard. Being able to get off to very good starts against Alone in the mid lane. Game one, we didn't see as much out of him, but this second game is well and truly performing. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, I mean, the thing is, as well, that probably is a gank that could have gone a little bit better for T1, but. Again, just forgetting little things. You're going up against a Witch Doctor. You're going to go in solo on the Tiny. And Cuckoo, unfortunately, had one of his treants there. So the Cask was able to bounce back and forth between the only two targets that were available. Chain locked him down. Gave the Primal Beast the earliest and easiest possible trample opportunity. You do have that Deso, though, coming out for Ana. So it's still one of these cases where... If they're able to win a team fight, T1 are going to be able to open up that map even further. And I, I just want to see how close they're getting to some of their other items as well. You know, Nature's Prophet, once again, going for the Orc and realizing they are not quite as lacking in lockdown as they were last game. But it's still not looking amazing. Clockwork this time around going for the Vlads. Disruptor, just a little bit more survivability so you don't get those solo pickoff situations happening. Uh, so it really feels like T1, while they've been fairly aggressive so far, they're just a, a few minutes away. Topson, I feel like they're going to allow themselves to be a little bit more passive, get this extra 600 gold that they need, and then once it turns into nighttime, then start to make their move. Yeah, I think that's going to be the big thing here for T1, is, is how you're able to, to utilize his first blink timing from Topson. He's very close to it. It'll be an okay timing out of him, of course. I mean, you take a look at his counterpart again on XM. We said how good of a game he's had, but I mean, the Primal Beast has a big advantage with how much farm you can find, and well, he's going to be further enabled now with a, with an Arcane Rune on Primal Beast. So this is also BKB coming out of the core. So do we want to see Vici Gaming look to smoke? They are very close to the Helm of the Overlord as well. I feel like this is a big timing for Radiant. They are for sure. And uh, yeah, I think they could wait for the Helm of the Overlord. I, I don't think you necessarily need to be consistently making plays with this Primal Beast. It's not like there's any amazing stuns outside of Topsons that you need to be too concerned about. But well, speaking of him, he's picked up that Blink Dagger. And right now, Zephyr, Whitemon, with the duo that they are, they just understand completely what's needed from them at all times. It's just about positioning to make sure they scout out these ganks onto Ana and make sure that he's not going to be just giving up his life for free. They are the sacrifices right now. You would love to be able to give the Glimmer Cape over to Whitemon, just to, again, enable a little bit more of that survivability, prevent a hero that the Primal Beast is looking to get onto with the Trample, just surviving that little bit extra. I think for both sides, you, you really need to be considering about how you position on the map according to Roche, because we have both sides have the capability to be able to take it now. With Ana having Desolated completed, with the Helm of the Overlord, both sides will be able to bring it down really quickly if they get a pick off and if they win the team fight. So at the moment for Radiant, they've got pretty good vision around top. They might also be able to get a pick off as well. Look at this, Thompson and Wyam on top lane, but great reactions out of Erica. Attribute shift's going to be fast enough and they're pinging. It's a window now. Static Storm on cooldown. You get to reveal the Blink Dagger as well onto Topson. Oh, they were hoping to catch them on Vici on the pure retreat through the jungle, but still under the cover of smoke. They might get them as they walk back to base, but it looks like T1 might just be a little bit too quick there and able to get out of dodge without losing anyone. So now for, for Dyer in particular, I mean, honest just taking a, a T2 tower down bottom. Yeah. No Glyph will come out as well. So this is really the big thing about... Oh, I'll hold that thought. It's top lane. In the tree line, <laughs> a bit of awkward positioning for Zephyr. You won't really make him. No way. It's just no space. way, Zephyr. All right. XM, there we go. It's the pulverize, but like you said, it's just space. On is continuing to get another full wave down bottom. He's going to go back to the jungle and get more farm as well. And this is the important thing about Dai. You need to always have bottom shoved in if you are going to prevent a Radiant lineup from going and taking this Roshan. Yeah, they're going to see that the Earthshaker's down here. It's because he's so close to picking up the Blink Dagger for himself, and he's actually got it coming out onto the Korea now. They're going to go into Rosh, and it looks like they should be considering claiming it, but T1 doesn't seem like they want to let that happen. You've got a rocket coming out from the base as soon as Zephyr respawns. They're going to scope this out, and they feel like they're ready to go. But who can get caught out on the backside by Frisk? We were talking about the win rate on this Earthshaker, 1 and 5. But can he make the big turnaround to change that? Smoke coming through. Sam, he'll start the fight he onto Arna. 
He's isolated from the team inside the river. He's going to be able to get the ultimate form off. So the bonus health, that might not be enough. It looks like Vichy gave me half the damage in Fritz. He's done it. In with the Echo Slam. On to three. Your team fights are killing. And Roche for the grand prize. Oh, not just the Echo, but the perfect Fisher block as well. Making Anna feel like he could go off into that area to potentially get back to safety. But he just couldn't. He was completely locked in one place. And that's exactly where you don't want to be when you're going up against these heroes that if you just stand there the primal beast is going to melt you the uh the death ward it's going to do the exact same thing so really just changing their fortune a little bit here on the back of one great play here we go fisher perfect on point good reaction coming through from Arna to get the true form off but it was just that little bit slow the rest of t1 they were a little bit more focused on taking care of a sentry ward as opposed to helping their carry and Ooh. i mean this is what's great about Ooh. a primal beast right you just create all that havoc and give you that huge window of an opening Woo! Uh. Huh? back to live yang i'm not going to be reacting too much to that one i think one thing that was set up by that is did you look Something at Yang's they... camera as well when he died there? I did, just no, to I, see I, if there was anything. No, it, nothing happened, but I was just lane, like... XM. Okay. Glimpse into Static Storm with Arna okay. here nearby and Topson as well for good measure. The big streak for them to find. It's going to be White Mon that claims it, which is honestly not the worst. We can get towards these items. Oh, they want to keep going. He's rushing the Scepter. Yeah, they might go up high ground here. Oh, All right. Why not? No Shape Shift, no Echo Slam. They're going to at least have to pop the glyph here. This is one thing that, again, T1, they just got to press the go button. And, I mean, there's not many better heroes to do it on than this lone druid. And, I mean, this fortify, it's necessary. But, I mean, it's not going to clear out that creep wave. You're going to be stuck down here on the bottom side for a little bit longer. They're going to look to wrap around through the, dire, uh, the radiant jungle. Perhaps get some D wards off if they can. And if they can get a pick off, that would be even better for themselves. But, oh, top side. Needs to be dealt with, Cuckoo. He's making the rotation up top, but I don't know if he's going to be able to TPS down this Ancient Black Dragon fast enough. Looks like he might just be able to. So I think one big advantage that T1 had in game one was just the multiple ways they would be able to find information across the map. Of course, that Slark and really early gem pickup was a big reason why. Topson. Lane XM. Yeah, he's in a bit of trouble. Topson just gets the toss away, XM. I want to play with the Polarize or the BKB as well to try and secure the kill. They just want more. Ana, oh, it's not one of these cases where you're baited by the neutral item, is it? Very nice. Quick fingers coming through from the Savage Roar, and he catches them on the wrong side of the Fisher. So, again, it's just about waiting for these little windows, right? Are you going to be able to get up into that next item? Do you have the burst damage to be able to take out some of these heroes? Because Lycan is essentially a walking helm of the Overlord at this stage. He doesn't have too much more than that. And so if Thompson is able to get off that... Uh, that tree volley with the Aghanim Scepter that he's looking to pick up soon, then you can really take away a lot of the sustain that that provides you, just in terms of the Vlad Zora. Ooh, the power rune's going to go Topson's way. Or go himself out. And we do see as well Erica's game. He's completely stabilized after the kind of rougher lane that he had. Third in net worth. A big advantage over, of course, the, his lane matchup in Cuckoo. And he's closing into Ana's Lone Druid as well. So I've been very impressed with Erica with how he's been able to catch back up. Manta style into the BKB is going to be the next item for the Morphling. And how many times have we seen this on the Tiny as well? You know, you might have a pretty decent laning stage. You might know how to deal with the laning beast like the Primal Beast. But unless you're getting kills, unless you're farming heroes, then you have a much harder time. Sorry, from Vici Gaming. Look at the wraparound. Topson's going to get the initial jump. It's on to Friss. Static Storm should be able to secure the kill, but T1, they've got to get out. Topson's getting XM's stalked coming. from the walls. So they're going to see White Mon in, in the tree line, and XM should be fast enough to cancel that. That is one beautiful thing about Vici Gaming. Uh, an issue they had in game one is that they didn't have ways to, uh, to gain information. This time you do with the Lycan walls. So we oh. see multiple times now they've been able to see out the positioning of, of T1's heroes. And you absolutely love getting that bullwhip as well on to the Primal Beast. Not only can it speed you up, it also slows down the enemy, just enables that trample to be an even bigger deal to be able to take out these supports in particular. Even just tossing it onto the... whipping the bear, right? Means that maybe one of your supports is able to get away while they're going for this run at you style. Still though. It's a really good spot for Radiant to fight. They've got a cliff forward still that scouts out all of T1. Oh, Frisk. They've only smoked us two at the moment. He's considering and it. Cuckoo, don't group up. Oh, don't group up. This is going to be a big echo slam. Frisk is in with XM's follow-up. Oh no, they group up and Vici Gaming penalize him for that. 
Oh, I was just about to say that they'd been doing a really good job of just kiting out this Aegis, not losing too much, getting relatively even trades, but then that happens. Although, only about 15 or so seconds left. Aegis is going to be gone. You're not going to have that Echo Slam available in tops, and he's only 300 gold away, but this is what Frisk has been dreaming of every single time he's been picking up that, uh, that Echo Slamming Earthshaker. Pretty decent vision. I mean, we mentioned the Cliff Ward, right? That uh, Vici Gaming have had inside of their own jungle. Well, this is a pretty decent one as well. I'm sure they're pinging up on the high ground saying, Oi, help me out here a little bit, Lycan. Give me some of that vision. And, well, it looks like they'll be able to get the D Ward off. So Vici now in a really solid spot. We saw the win probability previously, 75% in their favor. Each little pick off like that, especially onto uh, the Tiny, is just going to leave them in a much better spot to be able to progress into the next stage of this game. Ana, just level 15, not the highest. It really does feel like until you reach level 20 that you need to be playing very conservatively off the map as much as possible. It's that minus 50 second true form cooldown that you're going around. Oh. Yeah, B. That'd be big. Uh oh, there's going to be a lot of damage nice with the double blink. damage rune from Thompson. Yeah. Bring down the Lycan in our Frisk. Easy use to the glimpse back as well as T1, a successful smoke will net them two kills. And now this will give them an opportunity to try and get the map into a position, then get the economy back on their side. Again, they knew that they couldn't, they didn't want to take that fight on Vici, right? They knew that the Echo Slam was down, so as soon as you hit that timing, I mean, some of it is just great individual play from Topson, right? The Blink, as soon as he gets a glimpse of the Earthshaker, realizing that that counter initiation is going to be there to try and save the Lycan. He blinks out, he's able to land the toss still. Ooh, he's going to need to back away here on Erica, and it looks like he'll be able to in time. So, he would have done a decent job to be able to withstand some of the Aegis advantage from Vici. It definitely felt like it was more of a, a farming Aegis, though. Because we spoke about Erica and his catch-up. Very close to the net worth of Arno. Even BAB is top of the net worth as well. So, hasn't been able to get it too far out of hand. In fact, T1 actually dropped the net worth a little bit. I think, it, you know, at one stage got up to 6,000 for Vici, but down to 4,000. So, we do have... No advantage now for Vici to play with. One minute until potential Roche is up. We're looking for a fight shortly here. We're we still waiting for some items for T1 to be able to cut this lead even further. I think they're wanting to go uh, as quickly as they can. You know, their, their vision on the map isn't that great. So I think that's the big thing that they need to establish, especially like in these few minutes before Roshan. You know that if you get some really clever wards up, not necessarily in the super obvious spots that are going to give you the greatest amount of vision, but just ones that scout out some of the enemy smokes in the lead up to Roche, because to be honest, it's the second one that's the most important of the game. That gives you the big 1400 gold swing that comes with the Aghanim Shard. And I mean, someone like the tiny Topson, he's going to be doing a lot of his damage from the tree volley, of course, but if you're just able to get a few of those consistent right clicks in after, you can just see what he's going through on his quick buy. He's going into the Daedalus, he's going into the BKB. So he wants to be able to consistently swing in the middle of these fights, particularly on top of the Lycan. Well, you said Topson has to be able to deal with the Lycan, but who does BAB have to deal with in these teamfights? Who is he going to be charging down with his summons and with the shapeshift to try and take out of the, these teamfights? I think you've got to get the Disruptor down. I mean, that's really where they've come unstuck a lot of the time. Just someone being isolated. You've got two ways to be able to get that this game. Through the toss, through the glimpse, and if you're able to get rid of the Disruptor, suddenly one of those are gone. Disruptor's never going to be one to commit onto the front of the teamfights, so they're going to need to go for a clever play, maybe using the Lycan Wolves in their invisible ability to be able to scout out Whitemon's positioning. And we see Whitemon is working on the Scepter. It's going to take quite some time. Unfortunately, no Philosopher's Stone for him. Get even closer towards that. So that's kind of a, a pipe dream with the late game team fights. That could be a big X factor for T1, but not going to have it for quite some time. So eyes on to the second Roshan. Both sides, once again, need to be considering how a team fight is going to look around it. And, and that's why Vici pick up the gem. They will now have pretty much full control of this top side of the map, which means that T1, they're going to have to smoke and place a ward down on a higher gun as soon as they look to take a fight. 
Yeah, we've seen some of the issues with T1 in previous series, and they just weren't... They were like five seconds off dealing with the correct Aegis timings, uh, with the Aegis expiring. This time around, I'm sure they've got it down to the absolute second of when that Roshan is potentially respawning. You just see here, Topson cleans out the wave. They want to clump up together, potentially push in this one a little bit more because Lycan's doing a good job with the uh, Ancient Black Dragon to make the commit onto the mid and top lanes. But they really want to get out on the map. They want to get the back lines. They want to try and disrupt Frisk and make sure that he's not able to influence the team fights like he has the past two times. They're going to need to get back now. Radiant are scanning. Good scan coming through from Vici. Just preventing any kind of wraparound attempt. They see them with that deep observer ward outside of the base. Might be able to pick off this uh, Ancient Black Dragon, or even get the pick off onto BAB. Alright, no shapeshift for a little bit. They're going to take out the Ancient Black Dragon, which is quite nice. Slows down their push quite heavily. Does Zephyr go for the hook? Not quite. Roche is up. If Vici don't instantly go to Roche, and that's going to be shapeshift on cooldown, and T1 could force a fight. Mm -hmm. And again, you've got the Rocket Flare being able to scope this one out. Their damage isn't amazing on Vici. Actually, the, uh, the rock flare is just a little bit short, but they're still going to continue backing off as they go for that four man smoke. Yeah. Oh, did they, they do it the outside Corio. the base? Okay. Uh, they, no, they saw the Cory under the ward, so they know exactly, uh, at least a roundabout position where they are. But again, Shapeshift is not available for this team fight, so BAB will have difficulties of dealing with Whitemon. Thompson needs to connect with the rest of his team, though. Unless he's just here to shove out this lane, I think it's going to depend on what information Vici Gaming show on the map. Frisk, he is the one that they're looking to go for, and they're just trying to cheat out this team fight a little bit on T1. Find that next couple of neutral items. Tier 3 is a big jump up from Tier 2. So they've already gotten a little bit lucky there on Vici Gaming, being able to pick up the Elven Tunic. Perhaps Man Fight a bit easier. Oof. XM mid lane, oh! look at the hook from Zephyr! On to three, stuck inside the cog, so they've been able to isolate XM's Primal Beast. He's just able to he's walk away off the back of the BKB, now he's got the regen rune, and might catch T1 off guard. As Erika, meanwhile, continuing to stack up the damage off the tops and stuck inside the middle, and Vici Gaming somehow lose no one. It was looking like a disaster start, but they'll bring two members down of T1, and now they can look to claim Roche. Oh, they will claim Roche, 100%. I mean, what a hook shot coming through from Zephyr, but they just don't layer the Static Storm over the top of it. I understand the importance of being able to take out that Primal Beast. You know, he is such a big part of the front lines coming through from Extreme Gaming, but when you make an initiation like that, all of Ana's damage is single target. You've got to take the opportunity while you can. Oh, lucky regen rune as well, man. The tree just misses as well, so he's able to re-engage comfortably, and yeah, that's such a big swing going in Vici Gaming's favor. Do you consider high ground now? I mean, we saw Vici just poke the high ground before, even without the ages. Now you've got second row, so... I'm trying to... F I think Agshard given over to Erica, and he's got the age of the Immortal as well. Uh, yeah, potentially, but I don't know if you know if you even need to commit Erica for that purpose, right? You've still got Lycan, you've still got the uh, Helm of the Overlord creep that's going to be able to do it, and eventually Topson's going to run out of trees to be able to toss at these waves. Look at this bottom player. Okay, this is interesting from T1. Why am I playing with Arna? The Rat Dota, they're just Maybe, trying to see yeah. if there's any TPs back that he just glimpses them straight back, and they look to get the advantage there. Frisk. Frisk with the ward, they see exactly where Arna is. Hippies are starting to come through. Arna's going to turn with the Savage Roar. Cuckoo's even got a TP in, but now with Erica here, they're in trouble. A glimpse away the Morphling. But it slows them down. Zephyr one successful in the retreat. Oh, Zephyr is trying to find that pickoff, but he was just off the mark with XM there. So wasn't able to find vision of the Primal Beast. Could have potentially gone for the hookshot play. Assuming that the rest of the team would have been able to connect. You've got a Nature's Prophet. He's able to get there really quickly. You have Topson. So if they could have found a, a 3v2 situation, that's a big bonus, but Zephyr, hook shots all the way to the creep wave. All right. Cute little play. But I like that T1 are understanding the state of the game and just saying, look, we can't play 5-on-5 five five Dota. That's just the situation that we're in. We don't have the tools to be able to take out this Morphling unless, again, we find the back lines, which is going to be pretty hard to do, or we go for this Rap Dota play. Just trying to keep it's the boy... Easy to Trying to stall Ooh, out the game. Interesting. Yeah, it's possible. Again, I just... White Mon's playing alongside of Arna. Radiance and they're going to force a glyph out. It's something. Yes. Nice scan. Very nice scan from T1. 
wraparound attempt, but will not be able to catch him off guard. And even Cuckoo is going top. He realizes that this rotation is coming and he's like, all right, well, I'm probably not going to die up here. Oh, if you could catch that courier, that would be a big benefit. He's just going to let the, the boys do the work. Unfortunately, it's not the old Aghanim Shard. Otherwise, that Tier 2 tower was probably going to be going down, right? They just used the Tier 3 fortification. So they wouldn't have had that multi-shot to be able to take out uh, any sort of wave that's pushing in on the top side. So T1 weathering yeah, we, the storm. We, yeah, we see how difficult it is for them to siege into this tree volley. It just clears the whole Crete wave and pretty much all the Lycan summons minus the, the Helm of the Overlord. And some of the issues usually with Tiny's defense is you don't particularly have trees to play with, but you've, you've, got, you've got Nature's Prophet. Just chuck down all the sprouts, so it, it really will be difficult, honestly, for, for Vici to, to siege up this high ground. You, you can't just hope that the trees are eventually gone. No, you can't indeed. Anna has to be a little bit careful with where he's positioning right now. There aren't too many people showing on the map, but they just walk underneath this pretty obvious observer ward. So T1 going to have full understanding that they're clumping around here on the high ground region. And they are doing an incredible job to split up the map. Look at them again. Even Zephyr's just cutting mid. T1 doing everything right. Finally, the Vici Gaming, they might have an opening. T2 Towers claimed down bottom. Considering about walking up. They've still got the Glyph. Tree Volley up and available again. Topson's making sure that he can be as far back as possible. And there we go. Wave oh. cleared. Okay, well, now you can deal with Elm of the Overlord. You get a couple crits, apparently. So, uh... Oh, very cool. Titan Sliver Tiny. Mm. Oh, remember, remember those my days? God. <laughs> Dude, all right. So, I felt like whenever we were watching a Tiny Position 1... It was a 100% drop rate for this neutral item. Mm -hmm. I legitimately swear, whenever it was a tiny one in the game, it was written into the code that you had to get a Titan Sliver. Yeah, the tiny sliver. Uh, another important thing just to note, Arna, he just hit level 20. So that means that you yeah. can afford to play a little bit more aggressively now, just because you've only got a 10 second downtime on that true form. So I think they might be looking to eventually rally around him a bit more. Ugh, not if you're losing this and it's a 5v4 fight though. Anna, again, just TPing around the map, trying to get that next little bit of farm. He's going the old gunner build, maxing out the Wraith Bands, looking to buff up his own survivability as well as the damage of the bears. So if this continues to be an issue, which I imagine it's going to be for Vici, you're, you're going to have to look to itemize it to address the, the, the split push, whether there's some some stuns to be picked up or some extra mobility be, to be picked up, even some Tink Awards as well, because like, that's a full five minutes of the ages that Vici pretty much get nothing out of. They might at the very end of it, ironically, though, right? You don't have many trees to play around there on Topson, so this Ancient Thunderhide might do a good amount of work. Do they get the crits this time around? They do deal with the creep. Oh, XM. Is it deep? Good, quick Orchid yeah. coming through from Cuckoo. Okay, well, I was going to try and flop himself away. They're going to glimpse him back inside the base. Zephyr's found an angle onto Erica as well. Not the greatest person to target down at the moment. More Topson's in trouble. The McCabe's going to be able to cover the retreat on the Tiny. Ability is being chucked out. A lot of posturing from either side. But Zephyr's able to get away from that big initiation. They're still probably going to be able to claim this, but it could have been so much worse for T1. Ana has to be careful with his bear there. They're going to afford to get the resummon. You can't go though. If Hookshot's on cooldown, there's no way for T1 to start. Oh, maybe Thompson now you wants can. to be playing with the tree volley. No ages. Back. XM's gonna charge in. Look at the damage! Oh no! Erica doesn't have an opportunity for the attribute shift. They clean up to XM stuck inside the base as T1 beautifully done. The cogs to push him out so he couldn't find the bonus strength to stay alive through the damage from Thompson. This is what they were so anxious about. They were just worried that they have this potential to be able to defend inside their own base. They thought that they could wait it out, but oh, it's actually once the Aegis is gone that they look to go for that pickoff attempt. Obviously, they're... Oh, Frisk on top of Cuckoo. I'm, is he able to claim this? He's got the double damage, so maybe... <sighs> Cheeky little plays here. Look at, oh, mate, Ooh, look Topson's at, catching oh, yeah, he is. Ooh. Oh, what's going on? Oh, the hex. <laughs> he went back to Cuckoo, thought he was going to teleport. They cut him off, another kill for T1, 50 seconds without the Earthshaker. They're going to be able to force a buyback, maybe. And Frisk has been vital to the 5v5s on Vici. Mm-hmm. 
And this would be the, yeah, another important glyph being used, but it's not going to stop that bottom lane. So Ana just connects on three. He's got the AC as well. So the big thing that prevented Thompson from doing even more damage in that previous fight. In? Oh my. Yeah. Just murks the Witch Doctor. Oh yeah. And they're going to back off entirely. They don't want to again take this five on five fight. They want the isolation. Good glimpse coming through. Are they going to be able to catch out anyone? Doesn't seem like that's the case. So they're just being played with right now on Vici Gaming. Double buyback out of Vici. And T1, <laughs> that what an incredible loss, like seven minutes for them to kite all of that second ages to, to win the fight up top. Yes, you lose the melee barracks, but now the net worth lead is, is finally back on T1s. You think Arna could sell those three iron branches in his backpack? I mean, they're kind of just sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> A little bit I of mean, wasted XP. He's, he's no stranger of selling items. It's good luck. It's for good luck. Sure. Let's go with that. You got the Daedalus now on Topson as well, and he's going into the Wind Waker. I mean, it does kind of feel like it's the clutch late game item of this tournament so far. Oh, wow. All right. And I hope they give a little bit of farm to this shop, though. Arna just yoinked White Mon's Creep Wave. Pretty close to this scepter, which really could turn a team fight around if Vichy Gaming are not aware of this. Someone has to deal with this bot lane. Yeah. <laughs> like. Druid push is pretty far, as you can't just leave bottom now completely open. It's gonna go into the Abyssal Blade next, but I mean, if it gets super late, Lone Druid still, still can be relatively scary. You've got a Lycan, you've got a Primal Beast. Caught out BAB by the Triangle. A beautiful catch oh, from Zephyr, but the Sprout pushed him out. <laughs> what is going on in this game? Oh my. Ooh, we boy. see Ichi, they're gonna look to smoke up and catch him on the retreat. He won though, great read from them, looking to back all the way off. They see no one farming the triangle, they see no one inside the base down bottom looking to set up to address this pushing lane. I wonder what Cuckoo's going to go at uh, level 20 as well in terms of his talent. They've only got the one four staff so far that would be able to assist the Morphling if he gets caught inside that sprout and is just completely rooted, even through the BKB. We kind of see how the map controls change now with the gems being picked up from T1 as well. A lot of the wards are staying up for a little bit longer. And for Vici Gaming, you cannot leave this top jungle, but you're going to be forced eventually. Again, this, this lane getting shoved back here from down bottom will enable T1 to recla reclaim their top jungle. And if Vici Gaming lose this area, then it's going to make it very difficult for them to be able to set up for this next Roche. God, the ballsy TP up there by Cuckoo. Their vision up on the top side, especially considering they knew that they were all there, is... Uh, it's confidence for sure, and they're playing to win. They're not playing to not lose. They're not playing conservative Dota, and they realize how important that Roshan is. So claiming back their jungle, taking back the outpost yep. to enable the buybacks, it's going to go a long way towards giving T1 that chance of moving on forward and claiming this 2-0 victory. So now it just comes down to the micro from BAB. If he's going to be able to somehow get the wolves to the back line and scout out some of T1's heroes, because they have no wards to play with. They need to use the wolves or they need to use a creep wave to, to catch someone off guard. Don't even have a healthy <laughs> overlord creep to be able to play with either. Pot of lane, there's an arcane rune. So if someone's able to claim that, that would be a big benefit for them. The vision, they see XM. The T1 gonna move to the triangle, the rocket flare as well. Uh oh, XM, they're running straight to T1. XM's not gonna be ready. That's an Aghanim Scepter Static Storm. There's gonna be no BKB to protect him. It does have the buyback, Can they continue though. with the team fight though from VG Gaming? Eric is gonna try and pummel into Ana. Echo Slam's out from Frisk as well. It's gonna lock the Lone Druid into place. Is Erica starting to stack up the damage, but they don't have detection. Ana protected inside the Glimmer Camp for the moment. XM charges into the middle, gets the Pulverize out as well, but Ana is still slipping away. Finally, they're gonna be able to bring him down. They'll deal with the bear that provides the damage to get rid of the carry on T1, and they'll find Zephyr as well. Erica with the triple kill and Roche is up for grabs. Oh, they were just banking on the back uh, on the fact that he didn't have the buyback there on the primal beast. It really does feel like they would have been able to take that. Oh, they actually oh, go for Thompson. the charge in. It's got the BKB available. The damage coming through from Erica is too goddamn fast. The glimpse will buy him some time. Hobson will TP out. This is now Roche completely free for Vici Gaming. Third Roche of the game. Ages cheese and refresher shot, all the components going the way of Radiant. 
I mean, it, it's great to be able to find this singular pickoff, but it, it really does feel like they needed more. They needed to be able to claim more. It was a fantastic Maledict coming through as well here onto the Lone Druid. It did a ton of damage, but look at how tanky he is inside of that true form there with the AC, with the Wraith Pact placed perfectly by Zephyr, but it's just a Morphling taking an extended team fight, the buyback with the BKB coming through from XM, and they end up killing the Bear instead. That's what kills Ana at the end of the day, just the damage that it does. So they get double value out of that kill. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to come <laughs> and kill my primal beast. You got the DD on Erica. We're going to push up onto that high ground. They're not going to give them the opportunity this time around, but they've got all of their ultimates available. Oh, this would be a big kick. He's going to get blown up. Oh, the damage coming through for the Morphling. Thanks to the power rune, will force a buyback out of Thompson. The Hex is there as well. Might catch him off guard. The fault from Zephoth. They need the damage. All right. It'll come through thanks to Arna's bear. The Static Storm's ready for round two. T1, they can turn it back around here. The Tree Volley pummeling through. Thompson's going to jump him. into the middle as well. They brought down Erika and now VG Gaming need to get out. But can they cover the retreat? Can they cut their losses? They want XM. XM they know he bought back. He bought back Briar, the Primal Piece. Caught out inside the lead. There's nothing VG Gaming can do to keep alive to position two. Frisk will jump in. The cheese. Hail Mary play. It'll buy enough time for XM to play around with the cheese. He's not going to be able to onslaught away. So instead, it's going to look to try and get as much damage and take Whitemon into the grave with him. But that will not be the case as T1 protect their captain. They protect Whitemon, <laughs> but Frisk mind. will finally get the finishing blow. As T1, they'll still catch up to him nonetheless. Some crits raining down thanks to the tree volley. And T1, a big opportunity for them to walk it down mid. And Zephyr just yikes away the old arcane rune in front of Thompson. I'm sure he's, you know, a little bit annoyed about that. And Zephyr, you can see him there. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm going to make the big plays. I got my hook shot coming off cooldown in a couple of seconds because it was that initiation. He's got the Aeon disc to be able to play around with. And he can look to find that backline, create that havoc so that you don't have the ability to turn around and show the... Continuous strength. This is a really big fortify as well. They will not get the refresh on this one. And they actually get Zeph the pickoff too. Have they thrown this? Ooh. This is two lanes of racks, man. All the other lanes do kind of need to be addressed from T1. You do have respawns coming up as well. All right. This is playoff Dota. This is what happens, right? Yes, uh... People get nervous. People make mistakes. Big plays can happen. Look at that. They were able to get the kill. Instant buyback onto Thompson. He was ready for it. He realizes how important his damage is. And it was that uh, that leash that I was talking about, right? The level 20 on the Nature's Prophet. They dropped the, the Wraith Pack totem right on top of his head. So there's not the turnaround potential. Even if there's an amazing Blink Echo Slam to come through from Frisk, it wouldn't have done anything. It was on cooldown anyway. So T1 and high ground defenses, huh? See if they can do it again, though. It's a big question. White Mon is priority number one. You brought it up before that BAB has to kill him through the fights, and I think it's even more prevalent now with this Aghanim Scepter. There is some big issues. If he's able to get a Static Storm off, even onto one core, they have plenty of damage to be able to pummel in the inside to follow with that mute. So Vici Gaming, you have to find White Mon if you're going to be able to succeed in this next team fight. Are they trying to bait this one out? I mean, they do they have the gem? I'm not quite sure if they could see the wolf standing on top of it. Mm, top yeah, Zephyr and White Mon got a gem. Yep. They're just wanting to make sure that they are instantly moving forward. There's a lot of heroes clumped around this high ground area, but no one's got vision. It's just Zephyr flying around on his jetpack to try and give that understanding. Oh, just so close. And yeah, he does eventually ping it out. I was worried that that gem wouldn't have been able to catch him there. They're walking around underneath the outpost, so that's going to reveal their position. Cuckoo up top. He's having to deal with this top lane continuously pushing in. You have some pretty big level 25s for, for T1, however. On it with the spirit prayer, and we see that Hobson's gone for the the avalanche cooldown. So he's got four and a half second cooldown on avalanche thanks to the the octarine. Love to see it. S spamming out avalanches in the fights, cuckoo. I'm gonna try and protect the ward. Fuck a hex, maybe. Oh, Yang to to get away from my jungle. 
Nice little bits of extra damage that are about to be coming out soon from XM on his Primal Beast. Agadim Scepter, I believe, was coming out on the Courier, unless I'm mistaken. It's completed. Yeah, so there's nothing amazing to break so far this game. I guess the Demolish and the Root is going to be kind of nice, so you're able to man fight a lot more into that Lone Druid. They might just look to turn onto the Bear and have him maybe not know that understanding. I mean, Ana, he's been spamming games, you know, literally 200 plus in the past couple of weeks, 10 games a day, but... You know what, Primal Beast Ags, it's a relatively new thing, so in these high si stress situations, that's the sort of thing that can slip your mind. Spoke a lot just before about Vici Gaming and how they need to take the team fights of dealing with Whitemon, but what do we need to see out of T1 here? Who's priority number one in this next skirmish? I think it's still got to be Frisk on his Earthshaker, right? It's either got to be him or XM. You just got to have a an inkling of what that buyback status is, and it's been long enough that... Uh, you're going to have enough gold for it at least. Well, never mind, the timer in about a minute or so, but XM doesn't actually have the gold for that purpose. So if they're able to find the pickoff onto him, sometimes it could just come down to luck with who you're able to catch out. Is that Zephyr's job to, to get on top of Frisk? Mm, I think it's the entire team. It's worth committing multiple people because outside of like the perfect cask, which Witch Doctor doesn't want to be super close into the middle of these team fights, what else other kind of like big turnaround is there? Oh, there's really not. There's not that potential if you group up, you're worried for T1. May, maybe, maybe one thing to be slower. concerned about shortly is XM's 25 if he does go for the polarized piercing magic immunity. I know it's single target, but in particular if you if a core over positions and then if XM's on top of him and then if Erica has enough damage as well, which you should on a morphling at this stage. Mm -hmm. They could have multiple leashes. Have they addressed this uh, four staff situation? Yeah, they have. So which doctor? He's gone ahead and finished one up for himself. No one else can really look to go for it. Uh, you've got the dragon lance on morphling. Yeah, 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 but uh, they've got two now. Previously, they just had one. Erica, he's close to his level twenty-five, and he actually sells the dragon lance. I was wondering if he might be considering going into the hurricane pike, just because clockwork. If he gets level twenty, he could also look to go for that power cog's leashing units inside talent. Ooh. Queen said Erica, sweep link, and there we go. Level twenty-five, so. So often we see the waveform charges, and that's going to be the case once again. So either side, it's like we're just stalling this one out, getting ourselves set up for this next Roche Shard. Of course, Eric is still holding the Refresher Shard. No other components from the previous Roche. Yeah, great, uh, great farming in terms of the timing that it's going to hit as well. Right before this potential Roche respawn, he gets the full Swift Blink, and he has the buyback still. 50 gold surplus at the time, but it's a full-on smoke from T1. It's a great ward. It's a great ward to play with. Look at the jump as well. Thompson. They see him. He's pretty separate from the team. Well, they almost found They want to go on this for Vici Gaming. Eric is actually going to waveform into the middle. Trying to target, target down the Tiny at the moment. They won't have the damage as Thompson steps Whitemon. out to the right side. But they've been able to deal with Whitemon. And it looks like T1 need to get out. Back towards a triangle. Zephyr is in a bit of trouble at the moment. Thompson's also trying to escape. But no one will be able to catch up. Cuckoo's going to be able to beat KBTP. Zephyr should tick out to the Maledict. He will die inside the base. So Vici Gaming finding both supports. Roche is up in a minute. Yeah, lucking out on T1 oh, no. that time. If it was another fight that they lose right before the Roshan and it was super quick. Oh, no. Yeah, having to be a little careful here. Well, they know. They know honestly, he's alone. What can he do? He's going to have to get crafty to be able to escape. As Cuckoo's XM coming. onslaught to the right side. He's going to need help and he's going to need it fast. Maybe the bear can look to address the primal beast. They're actually going to turn to deal with Cuckoo instead. Stuck inside the sprout to the waveform will provide the vision. Vici Gaming, they're still on top the of Ana. BAB with the blink in. He's got an abyssal blade. Ana needs help. Thompson's here. He's going to try chucking the damage from afar, but with the BKB protecting XM for the moment. So the Savage Roar is not going to be an issue to push him away. T1 not wanting to buy back just yet. Another re-summon from Ana. Oh, How did they go? The bash is in the control. Erica goes down to T1. They baited them. They set the trap inside the base. They'll be able to turn to Yang. He's trying to escape to the northern side. They'll finally kill him off in the tree line. His tops him. Gets the triple kill and T1. All they needed was the buyback from Cuckoo. 
They do, they commit a few more, and this time it's when the Roshan's going to be up. They've got the vision, they've got the understanding that it's going to happen. Man, just that turnaround damage, the burst potential. They just kept kiting and kiting and kiting with how damn tanky. Frisk, they know he's on the higher ground. He just oh. detected it. Oh, oh, all the no, force! The double force! Oh, no, oh, they got no, another. no, Doctor does have his own force! Oh no, the worst sequence of events here from VG is now mid lane as well. Why one? He's got Erica. The Morph Link just bought back. Where's the control? Can Cuckoo get in range? Oh. Eric is not going to mess around. A BKB preventing the Hex coming out from Cuckoo, but that was almost the end of the game. Vici Gaming, oh my lord. Glimpse of a TI just being taken away potentially. They're going to commit fully with those buybacks. Someone's going to need to get back to base, or Cuckoo might just choose to stay here instead. Commit, take this Roshan away. Oh, Such a heavy buyback commitment and so much damage coming through with all those crits. Frisk, I don't know if he'll be able to get there fast enough this time. Oh, how quickly can they put stuff in their inventory? Ooh. Well, at the base, you... it's getting hit. Cuckoo's got to get back. Hit the siege creep, my guy. The siege yeah. creeps. Ah, another deal with that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! All right, they gave Cuckoo tomes so trying to get him his level twenty-five. But they found the right target at the start here. White one is easily the best target. Zephyr ended up hook shotting through onto a creep wave on the other side. Tops are just using these little things, lucking out with the flicker there, bringing him forward a little bit just to be able to escape the range, kite out the fight long enough, force them into these areas of uncertainty where they didn't have the vision advantage. And then Arna, I, I wouldn't call this a bait. They just, uh, <laughs> yeah. It was just a little bit of an outplay coming through here. They thought they might be able to take out the bear. Arna, again, the level 20 talent coming in handy with that super low cooldown. Thought potentially they might look to go for that quick kill, but the voodoo switcheroo lasting three seconds instead of two now means that they don't feel comfortable enough to go on forward. He's <laughs> laughing, he's laughing. He said, come on, chuckle. come into my house. See what my boys have got for you. All right, Vici Gaming, a game deficit. And their hopes of continuing on in the lower bracket. 22,000 lead for T1. Probability is somewhat pretty even considering. I think it's just the rack situation. It's still slightly favoring Vici Gaming. And of course, they're like, well, this is a bit tiny. Not super great into the later stages of the game, but this is a Topson mid tiny. We've seen what he's able to do time and time again. 4,900 health you have to go through on the tiny. He really wanted that quick pickoff. Got a spread. It's just so tanky on Dire, it's not going to be easy at all. You see Zephyr under the ward, but again, do you want to jump the clockwork? Nope. You need a response. Otherwise, the bear's just going to freely siege. And meanwhile, when, once the bear's going to work, Zephyr's ready and Topson's ready as well with a tree volley. Almost enough to bring down Yang, but Vici Gaming. At least keeping the heroes alive, but the barracks will not be so fortunate. The only one with buyback is the Lycan, and I feel like that's nowhere near the main target for him now at this stage. There was a big period where it was, where a lot of the damage coming through from Vici Gaming was because of that Helm of the Overlord, both from the creep as well as the aura, uh, and of course any kind of uh, roar that you're looking to use on the uh, the Lycan himself. But now it does switch over to the supports, or even the cores, honestly. We've seen so many times that White Mon's been able to hit these amazing static storms especially talenting heavily into it to be able to find it out. And of course, the double Static Storm potentially coming through here. Looking to move on forward, catch out anyone that wants to push out this lane because it's it's all melee, essentially, that they've got outside of the Morphling and you can't afford to commit into the front of the team fight. No, you, you're going to need a smoke here from Beachy. The Rocket Flare and the Bear in the front line just giving them way too much information. T1 know exactly whenever they're going to get the jump. Could be the last team fight. XM, chuck in, double fissure. Not the worst start, because Frisk has got the follow-up Echo Slam as well. They're going to try and block Topson at the moment. A decent amount of damage coming out throughout the Pulverize, but Topson's going to step out to the right side. But VG Gaming, they've locked onto their target. Can they reset, however, on Rainy? Because Arn is still in the middle, trying to 1v1 Echo at the moment. Inside the Sprout, they've been able to deal with the first side. VG Gaming. Can they set themselves up for round two? Arna's vulnerable. He doesn't have the boys nearby to protect him. His XM trampling all over the drill. And they'll bring him down. And now they'll turn to Nature's Prophet. It's Cuckoo just pulled back. 
Be cautious here, T1. You can't continue to bleed your members. Such Thompson. a heavy commitment to Thompson. He's got one more nearby. Static Storm's going to get you just a jump, but look at Erica. He doesn't give a damn about the Static Storm. Erica just pummeling in. Left, Anna. right, and center of the answers up there. Now Anna separated as well. T1 are crumbling. It's Vici Gaming. They can walk it down. A Glyph will only delay this. I think we're going game three. I think we are as well. It's going to need to be the biggest plays of all time coming through from Clockwork and Disruptor to be able to influence this one. They're just trying to spam out those rocket flares, influence the creep waves, make sure that you've got some level of backdoor protection, and BAB instantly just trying to make sure that that doesn't happen. Look at Zephyr. Hey, hey, what's going on? He just wants to push the creeps, man. He doesn't have a playback. Ooh, he's in it, miss. <laughs> Dude, Zephyr, how are you asking for a high five? You're about to lose the game. Oh, my must oh, be found. Nice blink reaction. Ooh. No way they all get out. They all got out. Oh, what? if the creeps got him, I would have lost my... <laughs> Is this going to delay for long enough, though? They've got pretty good they damage. Does, okay, does Clockwork sell everything to buy the Scepter so that he can spam that rocket flare to push out the waves? Mm. I mean, he's not, he's but just looking I wish he did. Oh, this team. Oh, no, this team. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, desperate times go for desperate measures. They're going straight to your fours, and why not? I, yeah, we got game three. Oh my, what was this game? It's only fitting we go the distance. T1 Vici Gaming, game three, you love to see it. Man, it can't be understated how good that was for Vici, just in terms of their coordination, in terms of their hero, their shot calling, and being able to find the exact target that they want at the start of the team fight in Topson, force that super early buyback out of him. That was all under T1's vision. They had very little to play with outside of the Wolves just patrolling around in the team fight. So the fact that they were able to get that quick pickoff, force that buyback where he's not able to quickly re